Good evening and we're live on Paranormal Path tonight and good afternoon US and good evening UK and how are you doing Lois? I'm doing absolutely fine, excited for tonight. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. It's a bit hot and toasty around here, isn't it? Oh god, yeah, it's like way too warm. I don't know, like US it's probably a normal temperature for you, but um, it's been about 30 degrees C where I am. And they're like, oh, getting weather warnings on the news. It's like, really? Why? It seems a bit mad, really. It anyway, really it brings us to our lovely guest, Wild Bill. I used to um, uh, do shows on the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Channel. And Wild Bill used to do an amazing show, which is now going to be on onto the Things Network. So here we go. Let's speak to Wild Bill. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, well, well, Wild Bill. Look, I did not sign up for a co-host, okay? Tough. You've I feel one. like I feel like this is gonna be like the Spanish <laughs> Inquisition now. Oh, it will be, mate. You mm -hmm. won't get word in that way. Hey there, how you doing? <laughs> Hello Happy everybody. Early Good people evening. joining us. Hi everyone. I think there's quite a few people who want to watch who um have seen you previously on the shows in the UK. So I'm well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to say a bit about yourself then well a little bit about myself okay let's see a little okay yeah I'm, a little <laughs> i i'm i'm me that was a That's little true. that was a little yeah. now if you want me to elaborate a little bit i can yeah go on like but you're we, an ordained minister though, i was gonna say but at that point though we might be bypassing that word that key word little you know yeah. But no, uh, uh, let's see. A little bit about myself. I, um, uh, I live here in the United States. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, actually, I live in Covington, Georgia. I just use Atlanta because it's the next major city close to me. And it keeps people from trying to track me down in Covington. And uh, but uh, I'm in here in Atlanta, Georgia, basically. Uh, I've been dealing. I've been dwelling and studying in the paranormal field, probably for probably close to about 40 years now give or take oh wow uh and then when i say paranormal field that's uh not just with uh the energies as we as a lot of people call ghost but i also deal a lot with the cryptids wow. ufology love ufo i mean because i am a firm believer that Yes, there is other life forms out there besides ourselves, and uh, we will call them aliens simply because we don't know what they are. But uh, I do believe in that, so I travel. I follow ufology a lot, and uh, also too, I am a uh, ordained minister, and I have been trained in order to do investigations and qualifications on as you might you might call qualification or seeing if they're correct seeing if it's real or not for exorcisms oh wow well, you in other words a, is this is this just a psychological sickness or is this real could this be drug related uh you know because just because somebody does weird stuff doesn't mean you know that they're, they're possessed and you know so i just I do a lot of just investigating, basically. As far as doing an exorcism, I probably I've got I've got the credit I've, I've got the permission to do it, but as my age and my health, I couldn't do it. Right. I wouldn't be able to survive it. Right. Now, as far as being there, watching and kind of being a control factor, yes. But as far as doing it, no, I could not, and I'm not going to say I can because my health just would not. Uh, my health wouldn't allow it so that's the oh, reason wow. why i always go in and i just uh, on a few of them i'll go in and just say okay they say they're they say they're possessed let's just see if they really are and that's when you start going in and trying to different things that you know to um debunk easy way like in ghost hunting debunk it you know debunk, yeah you know, we'll yeah. just say it that way. That would be the easiest way because most of the people at that point knows what I'm talking about when I would say debunk. In other words, 
Is yeah. this real or is it not? But uh, and then I just do a lot of studying on different religions and stuff. And and I always try, as I tell people, I try to learn something new, at least one thing new every day. That's and brilliant. that just that just keeps the mind going, you know, keeps the mind fresh and stuff. And and uh, even though every once in a while I get CRS disease, which is can't remember stuff. <laughs> you know, I did, that I, I did that when I was a teenager and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, uh, that's a little bit of that's a little bit about my. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. That's a little bit about myself. That's cool. When you sort of uh, go out and like look at the exorcisms. Um, do you actually pick up anything spiritually um, as to I am not, what, what I is am affecting not, I, you? I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a sensitive, sensitive empath okay. or nothing like that. Yeah. I am not. That's the reason why it's easier for me to actually go in there and debunk it, debunk stuff okay. and stuff going there scientifically because I don't have any kind of link with it. Right. Get you. The only time I ever do, I mean, I'll put it like this. The only way I have any kind of connection with any kind of energies is if it comes up and it picks up a vase or something and hits me over the head with it. Then at that point, okay, fine, there's something yeah. going on. Or like during the summertime, since I don't go out during the summertime because of the heat and everything, I do a lot of uh, in-home investigation. And when I say that, that's when I go over like people will send me like videos, pictures and stuff like that. Or EVP recordings and things like that, and say, okay. just see, they won't tell me anything. They'll just say, "Hey, look, see if you can find anything in there." Okay, that's good. And then in turn, if I go back, they might swear up and down that they found something, but I might go back and say, "You know, I went over it time and time and time again. I slowed it down. I sped it up. I, I on the on the uh, audio, I took out frequencies, brought them back, did all it, and I didn't find a thing." You know, and then they go, well, I did. It's like, hey, that's great. You know, I won't sit there and tell them they're wrong. I just tell them, say, from you ask me, and they know, and that's the reason why they send it to me. I just tell them, I say, well, you know, you asked, and this is what I found, you know. And uh, yeah. sometimes, I, I mean, I'm not saying that during this process, I might have actually overlooked something because things happen so quick sometimes that yeah. – Something might have got my attention, like my dog might have walked in. I might have went like that and then looked back over, and I missed it. Yeah. That's the reason why I review things numerous times, because of missing things, you know? And uh, because, I mean, I've actually, you know, I mean, even uh, some teams from the U.K. over there, I've gone back and watched their stuff and come back and said, look, you know, what they claimed is seeing a face in one of the frames uh, in one of the uh glass frames of the door i went back and go mm, no yeah so that, was a, that, was a flare, that was a flare from a reflection from and uh, well i say i have to remember who i'm talking to at that point i'll say from your torch over here it's flashlight but from your torch. yeah and they go really i said yeah i said because when this certain person did their flashlight or their torch and it scanned across and it hit a certain area which was real shiny and reflective it cast a light over into that pain that because of where you were sitting at due to uh pareidolia it looked like a face but it wasn't ah. and then they went back ah. and checked it out and even went back to the place and checked it out you know so yeah, yeah. What, what's like, been no. your most what, what's been your most scariest case that you've ever had to do an exorcism on? Oh, uh, uh, see, I really don't, I really don't get into the exorcism part that much simply because of what I do. I don't really experience them that much, but the only exorcist type thing I will do is on a, is on an object, like if a, something is attached to an object. Now I will go in there and I will try to cast it out. But as far as a person is concerned, uh, I really don't, per se, do that. Like I said, I go in and do the preliminaries. Right. And as far as scary, I'll be honest, I haven't really found much stuff that does scare me. 
uh, I'll be honest, the human, I, I, let me tell you what I think is to me what the scariest thing there is. The scariest thing to me out of everything is the human race. Oh, exactly. I, I could that be, is the I, scariest could, thing to me. I could not agree more. It is, I would rather be filled with a room full of dead people than. I mean, humans. I can associate, I mean, I can even associate with demons better than I can. And I'm using one of Zach's terms, demons. Yeah. I can, I can <laughs> Definitely. I can associate with them better than I can a human, you know, human race, because, yeah, I, I you know, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah, I, I like I tell people, you know, they talk about, uh, there again, I'm not getting into religions, but due to Christian religion being a big part of the United States, UK and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. I'll kind of go on that I one. That they talk about that God made man. And I tell them real quick, I say, I'll be honest. I said, if there was a God, if there is a God, the biggest mistake he ever made was creating the human race. Yeah. It's, and I'm like, uh, why is that? Why creating it? It's like, okay, fine. Let's get away from creating the human race then. Let's get to the point that he gave the human race he gave man a brain which he cannot even deal with oh no I but said, they don't use of, most of it do they either do what don't use most of the brain either well <laughs> most people it's, they say it's like 10 percent humans use basic most average human uses about 10 percent of their brain wow. i'm trying to from what i from the people i have around here where i live at I'm trying to figure out where they even got that at because I would say <laughs> around here with the people I live around, which I'm not from this area. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the people around here, I would say they might use maybe 3%. Wow. And that's when I always go back to my favorite, favorite phrase. You just can't fix stupid. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, uh, <laughs> Love exactly. You know, uh, humans are hard work. We've been created as a virus. I'm sure we're a prototype to test how they affect the world. Oh, we're not a virus. Man is not a oh, yeah, virus. Jay. Man is a cancer. He destroys yeah. everything he touches. Oh, definitely. Yeah. That's a cancer. That's not a virus. Virus you can cure. Yeah, cancer? No. Man is over here now. They even want to um, start killing the uh the gray squirrels because they're not native to our country but all of a sudden we're like we're overrun with gray squirrels I, so I the one you, who uh, from birth control so well, potentially I, wipe out the whole well well i'll give you a hint if y'all were smart i would have a genocide of the gray squirrels oh that's what they want to do believe me i we got them in my backyard uh-huh we've eat, got them now they eat, they eat into your house then when they get into your house, then they eat into your wiring. They can actually cause fires and stuff. There is not, I have not seen anything. I mean, I know all of God's creation, all of God's animals have a have a, uh, uh, a reason for being around. So far, nobody has been able to show me yet <laughs> what is the reason for a gray squirrel. Oh, Basically, it is a rat with a hairy tail. <laughs> and to me even rats even to me even rats is more valuable than they are because at least rats eat garbage and stuff squirrels they just uh no nah, i don't know anything <laughs> good for a squirrel i really don't you know uh -huh. okay so two new subjects you collect a lot of different things then and you've got a selection behind you of masks and everything well that's only oh, about that's only, that. that's only about uh that's only about a quarter of the collection in this room. And it even goes past this room and goes to another room. Wow. Awesome. But, uh, but yeah, I have, uh, I have all sorts of stuff. I have people from all over the world that send me stuff. I have a uh, lot of uh, people in the uh, special effects field who send me stuff. And the reason why is it's not because I'm that good or I'm that special. It's because I used to work for a company called Plaid. And my wife still does. She's a QAQC supervisor for Plaid. And what that is, that is one of, one of the largest craft suppliers in the world. 
Wow. So we get a lot of stuff. Matter of fact, my garage out there is just half of it is just nothing but craft supplies. And what I do is I will find up and coming uh, artists, uh, special effects people, whatever. And I will send them these things called care packages. And I don't charge them no postage, no nothing. I, I even take care of the postage. But for instance, like uh, I've got a spe- I've got a special friend that's out in California. He's done uh, he's done stuff for like Tromaville. I don't know if you know what Tromaville is. That's the one with uh, uh, the Toxic Avenger and stuff like that. It's okay. kind of a you know, and he's also done stuff for National Geographic for uh, Shark Week Discovery, not National Geographic uh, Discovery. But he's done all sorts of stuff. He was even on. Uh, he was even on that TV program, Face Off, where they have these special effects people oh, come in. He was on okay. the third season of that. Wow, awesome. And the only reason he didn't win was political. He uh, got second place. He got second place, which is fine. That's but cool. like the last, like the last box I sent him, I just sent him a bunch of stuff, piled it in the box. And his uh girlfriend went through it and everything and started uh pricing stuff out because i was just curious you know he said well here's an example of like the boxes you send he said she was going through it and he said by the time she got to a thousand dollars she just gave up and she still had more stuff to go he said so you sent me over a thousand dollars worth of product that i would have had to go out and go buy it's like hey marvelous didn't cost you a penny did it goes nope so in turn the next thing i know a few months down the road, I've got three brand new masks coming in the mail that I never asked for to put up in my collection and stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I, you've always heard me say it. Uh, Louise, Louise has it, but you have always heard me talk about karma. Yeah, that's it. I've I always love talked, I've always talked about karma. <laughs> and, you know, I've, I've always talked about karma. And I tell people, I say, you know, what you give, you receive, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And I mean, after it took me over 15 years of working on clearing my karma, I finally got it right. And I will, I mean, I'll give you, I mean, I finally got it right. So I'll do nothing to screw it up. Matter of fact, for instance, I'll give you, for instance, this is how much it weighed on me this weekend. I had ordered something from Amazon and uh, it was supposed to be delivered last Friday. Tracking said it was delivered. Okay. I didn't get it. So I made a claim and they uh, said, well, here's the deal. If you don't, re- you know, says look around your property, blah, 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 check your neighbors. I said, look, I'm a private resident, you know? And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, check around. I said, it's not here. And they said, well, if it's not there by Monday, let us know. We will either refund or resend. I said, okay, fine. So anyways, yesterday evening, a woman comes by, which don't live too far from me. She could have brought it Friday and saved a lot of problems. She brought it to me and she goes, oh, we got this the other other day. And she said, I'm sorry, I opened it. And it was like, okay. And I said, oh yeah. I said, I know what this is. I said, this showed that it was delivered Friday. She goes, well, I knew it was either Thursday or Friday. I said, yeah, it was Friday. And uh, I said, but thank you. And I felt like asking, and do you not check labels on oh, the yeah. front to see it was not addressed to you? So why did you open it? But, you know, such a great fellow that I am, I just didn't say anything. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, I've been thinking, it's like, okay, the driver screwed it up. His karma could be a mean saying that I didn't get it. Yeah. And either have it replaced or the money given back to me. And I even went as far as like, you know, I could actually keep this stuff and get the money given back to me. I said, I've ordered so much stuff from them. They actually really owe it to me. And then I went and I asked Melody, you know, my wife, Mel, the boss, the boss. Asked her about it. And you know what the first thing she said? As much as you talk about practicing karma, and now you're asking me this question, I said, you're right. You're right. I said, you are definitely right. I will not do it. I said, because sure as heck, if I was to report that I did not get it and they gave me back my money, 
I said, at that point, karma would come back on me and bite yeah. me in the rear end. And I said, That's you're sad. right. I'm not. So immediately, right before the, matter of fact, right before the show, right before I talked to you, I got a hold of Amazon on the letter we would have going, the email we had. And I told him I received it. And I told him what happened. I said, this was a bad service, but that was due to the driver not paying attention. But I said, other than that, I said it was good. So I, yeah. she kept, I mean, she kept me straight. She kept me in line. So, good. you know. <laughs> good for her. Uh, I've yeah. got a question here from uh, Sharon Clayton. What's the topic tonight? Every Monday we speak to special guests, people from within the paranormal field, be it team members, be it, like we've got Richard Felix coming on soon and, you know, different people. Weirdos, and, uh, what, weirdos like me. And Wild Bill is actually going to be doing a show soon on um, the Things Network. So tell us a bit about your show. Well, I used to do a show with a, another organization. And I had to leave it for personal reasons, which is no problem. I mean, nothing against who I was doing it with at all. Having nothing to do with it. It was just personal things with myself that I had to leave, but I'm continuing it on. It's still keeping the same name even, and you can take it either way you want to. I know uh, Jacqueline knows what I mean by it, yeah. but for some reason, Nick doesn't with things network. He thinks it's the other one, but it's called the rantings of a madman. And yeah. Jacqueline knows of it being the madman as having the coat of arms that has the arms that wrap around you and mm -hmm. being placed in a padded room. Nick, I think he thinks it's more of just a man who is mad, the pissed off type mad. And it's like, yeah. okay, yeah. And they kind of both fit in a ways. But truthfully, it's basically uh, the lunatic uh, madman lunatic yeah. asylum so oh wow know, but anyways you know but uh basically what it is it, it's going to be one of these type things that i'm even going to i'm going to take uh requests from viewers of what to do maybe like the next week or whatever but uh it's going to be it's going to be a lot about the paranormal mostly because of what it is, but there again, it will maybe go off. Well, people who knows me know <laughs> that uh, I'll be talking about one thing and all of a sudden the brain will go off on another <laughs> tangent. And the next thing you know, we're talking about uh, World War One or something. I mean, who knows? Who knows what's coming? I mean, but it, it's, it's basically, I put it like, it has the best way to put it. It's going to be a surprise. You never know what you're going to find <laughs> that week on my show. Oh, wow. That's just that's pretty much like us, Jacqueline. That's pretty much like your show. Our yeah. show you never know what to expect. Plus, sort of, kind as, of. as, <laughs> uh, as I said in the comments, it's when um, Sharon had asked, uh, obviously, what um, about topics we do, I put in the chat. We never have topics because... As you know, while, while doing shows, you always go off topic and it goes on, it goes south somewhere. Well, like yesterday, like her show yesterday, everything was going great until Wild Bill showed up. Yeah, then we... Uh, then when Wild uh, Bill showed up, it went off on the deep end. Yeah, we, we did bring it back and it was cool. It was a good well, show. I mean, I, yeah, we brought it, well, Jacqueline brought it back, I think. Yeah. On her last <laughs> comment before she closed the show, it got brought back. Yeah, no. I got it back. <laughs> okay, Let's... we've got a question here from Vaughn. Um, question for Wild Bill. Could you tell us where you started? What have you studied? What got you directed to each step? Okay. Could you tell us where you started? Okay, well, I started... Uh, I, I mean... I put it like this. Hmm. Let's go. What got me started? Why don't we go that? What What got me started? It was my grandmother who was uh, who's full blooded Cherokee. She's the one that got me started because in the uh, well, let's see. Let's be politically correct. Uh, 
We are no longer Native Americans over here in the United States. We are now considered the indigenous, whatever. But in the Native American beliefs, we believe in a lot of cryptids, ghosts and spirits and all that kind of stuff. And we believe in, if you want to say it, aliens in their own right, because oh, well, we talk good. about, you know, we talk about spirits from above, you know, we, we call them spirits. And uh, that's what kind of got me started. Uh, what have I studied? Well, being Catholic, that got me screwed up from the get go. Because I had to go through Catholic school. <laughs> Love penguins, hate them, hate them, hate them, hate penguins. And, uh, but uh, that got me started and everything. And then um, I'd always been kind of interested. And then I went into the military. And when I got out of, when I was in the military, I observed stuff and found out things that just really, if you might want to say, made me even more inquisitive saying, you know, I've always been taught this, but guess what? That's not right. So when I got out, that's when I started going to college. And my, <laughs> this is the scary part. My major was medicine. Wow. I was going to be a general practitioner. Oh, Gosh. Wow. <laughs> and uh, that would have been scary because I've got the bedside manner of a billy goat. <laughs> I mean, I would walk in. It's like, Doc, what's wrong? You're gonna die. I mean, you know, that's real good. That's just what a person in the hospital bed wants to hear, real quick. Oh, so, but anyways, but then my secondary was study of religions, theology, and stuff. Wow. Wow. And I wound up. Well, a couple of things helped me on that. One, I was talking to a doctor, and this is back in the seventies. He was telling me, he said, you want to be a general practitioner? He says, are you sure? I said, well, why? He says, because, just let me tell you that. He says, right now, he says, my malpractice insurance costs me $100,000 a year. Wow. And this was back in the 70s. Oh, wow. Yeah, he know. said, you've got to have that to practice because people are going to come back and see you otherwise. Yeah. He said, unless if you've got to, unless if you're already, uh, so you know, got your shingle and you've been around for a while and you got the you're not gonna be able to handle that hundred thousand dollars a year unless if you go being a resident at a hospital or something where they cover you. And I was like, well, okay, fine, okay, I can kind of understand that. And then I during school, I had a professor ask me, they said, uh, well, I should say she asked me what is a stool, and I do not mean a three-legged thing that you milk a cow from. Okay. okay. Is it, yeah, is it, we know. They <laughs> asked me this. They asked me this now. I said, I said, okay, do you want me just to be blunt of what it is? <laughs> and they go, yes, just tell us what it is. I said, of course, you know, she was looking for feces and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But me being who I am, of course, it didn't come out that way. I know what I'd say. <laughs> it was like, it was like, you want to know what it is, really? Because yes, what is it? It's shite. Yeah, too right. <laughs> do you do you know? Mr. I never Paris. knew that until I was eighteen year old, and I went to the hospital because I could barely walk, and I was walking funny, and they did like a, a thing on my stomach. And the nurse came back and said, you're full of stools. And I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. And I said to my step, well, it was like my dad's ex fiance at the time. And I said, and what does she mean? And she went, Louise, you're full of shit. <laughs> nice one. Well, well see, that, see, I always loved, you know, when you're talking about that, when the phrase I always loved, and it was all, it was given by a, a European, as a matter of fact, from the UK. I think his name was Ian Anderson, better known as Jethro Tull. Oh, okay, cool. And he says, thick as a brick. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Thick as a brick. Because he will go, a wise man does not know how it feels to be thick as a brick. 
What thick as a brick means? Thick means dumb. Yeah. Brick yeah. means shite. Oh, okay. So a wise man <laughs> does not know how it feels to be dumb as shite. <laughs> nice one. But anyways, uh, anyways, on that deal, though, like I was talking to teacher, she sent me up to the Dagum Dean for that, to the to the thing. I mean, sent me to the office, basically. And uh, they asked me about it. Poo's a good enough word, right? But, uh, you know, we discussed it and everything. And uh, he just told me I did nothing wrong, but apparently she didn't care for it. So anyways, so I got out of that. <laughs> I dropped out of there and went to a different school and got a free okay, okay. degree and got a free degree <laughs> in psychology because of it. And uh, but then after that, I went out and I actually started working in the hospital. I mean, I'm also a I am a certified radiologist technologist, not a technician, wow. but a technologist. But when I saw what went on in the hospital, what kind of stuff, malpractice, hypocrisy and stuff that happened between doctors and the medical field and stuff. I just said, I don't need this. I don't need this at all. I so I dropped, I, out of, I dropped out of the medicine, medical field altogether. Uh, I was a national registered paramedic. Wow. But, uh, but, you know, that was about it. And that, uh, and on the other question that ended, like what, progressed me in taking these steps was is that uh, I had always done the paranormal stuff and been inquisitive about it stuff but what actually got me into getting more into it simply was that uh, after the government over here declared me as being handicapped that I could not even work at a flea market to take money wow. I could not work at all so at that point I started going even further finishing up online college, finishing up my degrees and everything, and uh, just kept going that way and uh, just studying. And that's what progressed me in steps. And then I started talking to like-minded people. And now I'm in the deal where I talk to them back and forth. We talk back and forth. We share notes and stuff, if you want to call that. And for some strange reason, I've gotten a name uh, from uh, I've gotten a name, or my name is known. Let's put it like that. I've got many different places. Oh, you're the Wild Bill of Dutter. Like, yeah, that's me. Why? <laughs> oh, I've heard about you. It's like, oh God, no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I hope it was good. He's like, oh, it was. He's like, well, then they lied. <laughs> uh, we've got a nice question here from Craig, and it's a bit of what you said just today. Um, I'll just post this one. So, could I ask Bill thoughts on potential powers of the Native Indians in America? And you actually mentioned Indigenous people last night, didn't you? Uh, I mean, potential powers. I mean, they have no more powers than just a common man does. But the problem is with the Indigenous, with the Native Americans, we practice it. We practice it. That's how come the powers are there. It's like a good way to do it, like over there where y'all are at in the UK. It would be like, and I use this term loosely, witches. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get what, what makes what yeah. you know what makes them any different than anybody else is because they study that particular form. It's just like in the Native Americans. We practice and study our our beliefs. It's just like a Christian. They believe in the Bible. They follow the Bible and all that. Okay, fine. I mean, that's great. I love it. If that's what it if it, if it does good for you, marvelous. And not saying that I'm against it, because uh I'm yeah. not. But there again, I could also I can also show you the Tehran and all that other stuff too up here on my bookshelf. So I study them all because uh, you know, they just kind of fit together, you know. And uh Sorry. matter of fact, I've but I suppose off. if you're dealing with cases, you've got to have that knowledge, I suppose you're towing every waters, if that makes sense. Do that religion on the cases because 
different religions can bring in different things. Yeah. So you've got to know with what you're dealing with. It's a belief like system got, of the person, isn't it? Like if I go to a Christian's house, their beliefs are going to be different than if I go to somebody who is a pagan or yeah. Indian or, you know, or I say Indian, uh, Hindu, That's Muslim, yeah. Christian. I mean, they all have uh, this idea of spirits and stuff, but it's called differently. So yeah, you've got to know right. who you're dealing with. And also, too, if there is an entity that needs to be gotten rid of or something, they also follow, I believe, I, I, I believe they follow their religious beliefs. So I've yeah. got to know what to do to dispense of this particular thing. So, you know, but uh, but to his answer about the powers of Native American, the powers is, is that 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 we believe, we practice, and our beliefs are strong, but there again, a Christian believes in God, Jehovah, and Jesus Christ. They practice it. So with them, that belief is strong. Yeah. So, like I said, we are no different than any other human. It's just how we practice and how we do it is all it is. Awesome. And anybody can do that with their faith of what they believe in, even if they, even if they're atheists and they have no faith. As long as they practice what they believe and work that, their powers will get uh, stronger. Uh, we've got a question from Robbie here. Um, how long did you study before your ordination? Because Robbie's actually um, uh, ordained God, as well. Uh, Five, four, six, over six years. Wow. Yeah. Long time, Bo. Over six years. Wow. I've got Terry Coops with a question. How's your native friend doing on the reservation? As we're struggling last year. Which one? I think I know who she's talking about. Uh, he's over in the, uh, over in the West. Um, Oh God! Um, I know. I think I know who she's talking about because during that time, yeah, Terry, it's she would have known about it. Uh, he's, it, believe it or not, I haven't heard from him in a oh, few wow. years. Oh, and uh, he was on a tribe. He was with the tribe over there that uh, was having it over in the Dakotas that was having the problems and stuff with. Uh, United States government and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I remember that. The everyone... pipeline, the pipeline, and yeah. all that kind of the oil pipeline, and all that. Yeah, he was one of them. He was oh. a good friend of mine. But uh, I'll be honest, I haven't heard from him in a while. Oh wow! And okay. I, I don't know because uh, I've reached out to him and just is like he might have taken a sabbatical from the social media. Yeah, which might be a good thing. Uh, cause I've debated that a few times my own self, but there again, <laughs> that's how I kind of keep up with these other teams and groups and stuff that I like to watch and stuff. Cause like I said, I always learn. I'm always learning. I mean, stuff that, uh, you know, I, I, I learn this stuff and, and then I get into a mindset. I keep thinking a certain way. And then all of a sudden I'll watch a, a team or something and, uh, they'll have be having a talk about certain things and things like that and all of a sudden it's like wow i've been thinking wrong all this time wow you know it's actually this way and i start looking at the way they do stuff and it's like you know hmm okay let's see i was a seminary and okay yeah. i'm doing going back and finish my studies using the old catholic church see okay theology right okay robbie i'm kind of the opposite I dropped out of the Roman Catholic. See, I was Roman Catholic. I dropped out uh. of the Roman Catholic theology and went to general theology in college where I wow. studied more. 
So we're kind of the difference. But yeah, I understand where you're coming from. But uh, trying to find your own path, though, don't you? Well, you find do, what and you have, find, well, you have to find your own beliefs too. That's right. And I'd be honest, uh, nothing against it, but the Christian belief in its own self did not fit with me. Oh, that's it. Everyone's different. And yeah. you know, and I, I mean, you know, but what I believe in still kind of relates. As a matter of fact, I can even show you passages that will strongly show you what I believe in is true. But uh, not trying to be... What am I trying to say? Not trying to be mean or nasty or nothing like that, but the Holy Bible. There is yeah. so many books that has been left out of the Bible that explains things too many different ways and uh now robbie the only thing i see that the only thing i still use is roman catholic is the part about exorcisms uh, i still use that and their guidelines because they got it down pretty much to where i am usa they kind of uh, yeah. say yes or no but uh but anyway back to what i say it's just like the Holy Bible, this is going to sound mean, but I'll explain why. To me, the Holy Bible, the what they're calling now the Holy Bible, has got to be one of the best fiction books ever written. And I say that only because the Bible wasn't even written until 400 years after Jesus and the apostles had died. So basically, this is word of mouth being passed on. Yeah. We know how that goes. We yeah. know how that goes. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's been so many things disproven about, like, Jesus walking on the water of the Sea of Galilee. I mean, you know, it showed that at low tide, there's a sandbar that reaches from one side of the coast to the other side. And it's deep enough on either side of that sandbar that you can sail a big fishing ship on either side. So that's one of them. Uh, the other one is that, let's use magicians, for instance. They have done things that was considered a miracle done by Jesus, like turning water into wine. I've seen yeah. that. I've seen a magician do that. Uh, you know, do the, you know, multiply foods and stuff. I've seen them do that. I mean, you know, so I'm not going to say he didn't do it, but there's enough that has been showed to me to make me wonder and to, I hate to use the word doubt, but it's what it is. It, it's a doubt because now I'm doubting it. It's like, hmm, did that really happen? You know, and did it happen in, like they said? We're entitled to our own opinions. I mean, obviously, like when when it comes to life, it's good to have that quit, you know, be skeptical about the Bible because at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's a good few things myself. And I went to a Catholic school myself. Um, I'm sorry. And and there's a good a good few. No, don't be sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't. No, know I went through it. No, I'm saying I went through it too, and I know how it is. You know. That's oh, what I know. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. And there is things like myself that that I, like I question. Right, and I only question this because I watched religiously, religiousless, and it's with Bill Ma, and it's a good documentary. <laughs> And one of the one of the things that stick out in my mind, and I always quote, is when he says, "You see, baby, uh, you see Jesus as a baby, <clears throat> and you see him as an adult." But nobody talks about when he was a teenager, sort of thing. Well, you also got to remember, back then, a teenager was an adult because the life expectancy was only about 30 years old or so. Yeah. So to be a teenager, there was no, there was no word saying teenager. So basically he went from being a baby straight into being an adult, basically, you know, and on that note, can I do this? 
this kind of touches on ufology right here. Oh, yeah. please do. Yeah, well, yeah. This kind of touches on you ufology. Know. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. Jesus was a product of immaculate conception. Right. Mary but... was never touched by a man. Joseph, and I still can't understand this, why Joseph didn't look at her like, look, woman, something happened here. <laughs> I haven't done nothing with you, and we know how it happens. Yeah. Explain yourself. But instead of that, looking at it as a bad way, that uh, Mary was uh, not truth, not, not. Uh, a virgin. Well, the heck with yeah. the virgin, but she wasn't, she wasn't, <laughs> you know, she wasn't, no, that she wasn't with Joseph as his, you know, that she yeah. was honest with him, truthful with him, 100% yeah. with him, that she had a side affair, which is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Which she, I'm not saying she did, but to me, I think that the birth of Jesus and the Immaculate Conception is your first physical proof of alien abduction. Wow, I like that. Mary was abducted, impregnated. Because, see, that would also give you a reason why Jesus can do stuff that a normal human being could. Wow. Why he could do miracles that other humans can't do. But yet, if you think about it, an alien could do that. A higher, yeah. a higher being from a different planet could be, could do that. And, you know, it's like, that's that me. I mean, I love that right there. And that's what pisses a lot of Christians off too when I say that. Do you know But about, I, I, I say, I, I say, I, you know, I tell them, I say, that's the first proof of, uh, of alien abduction right there. Because otherwise, how could Mary have gotten pregnant had she never laid with a man? But yes, she, became, and she was a virgin, but yet she became pregnant. How could this have happened, you know? Do you know, you know the mouth kind of your mouth kind of falls open at that point. And go, uh, I don't know. Wow. Okay, there is also a chance St. John the Younger is married to a son, and therefore Jesus is half brother. Yeah, and it also doesn't tell you too that Jesus was Jesus also. I mean, it's also not it's also not known that Jesus also had a daughter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really? I don't know. Mary that and Jesus. Mary and Jesus had a had a daughter. Oh, wow. Not his mother that, now. Not his mother, crazy. but yeah. But Mary Magdalene, him and him and her and Jesus had a daughter because she is actually wow. a saint, actually. And there is a place that is a church dedicated to her. Okay. okay, let's see what Terry. No, go back, go back. I want to see what Terry go said. Terry, said. Terry okay. came out with a good comment earlier as well. I put that one up. Oh, as go well. back. Okay, go back to the other one, then then we'll go back. We'll, we'll do this one, and okay, then we'll hit the other one. one. Her name was been, Sarah, the lady. I've been looking. An anthem that killed him, and connection into demonologist at the Saint Germain and Hitler. That's fascinating. Uh, what uh, Terry said earlier as well. Um, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not shaking my head, Terry. It's just you know, I, I'm I'm just not a. Even though I've studied it and I know it, I'm just not a big demon person. Yeah. Because I, I, out of all of my experiences and stuff, maybe I can say I have ran into maybe one, maybe. But there again, people go, well, you know, he's just an evil. I was like, yeah, but there again, there's also such things. Just because it's evil doesn't mean it's a demon. Because there was evil people alive. Yeah, and when they die, true. their spirit, their energy is still going to be evil, probably. And you want to call that a demon? Why? I said, you know, I said, it's, you know, it's like, but you know, blah blah blah, and, and, and it's like you know, you don't understand. A demon has never been human, so how could an evil person be a demon? They're not, yeah. because there a demon was many. never, never, never human. Okay, let's see. Some say, yeah, what could be too restrictive, and I feel more open, open to interpretation of other religions. Uh huh. Yeah, the totally Book of weird. Enoch. Yeah. I mean, just I mean, there's so many books that has been. I mean. 
You want to, Terry, you want to read a real good one? Read the Lost Books of Eden. Read the Lost Books of Eden. You're going to find out. I mean, and that's another thing, too. Adam and Eve were not the first people on earth. Adam and Eve were the first people in Eden, in the Garden of Eden. Uh, Otherwise, we would all be a product. I mean, even though they say we are all brothers and sisters. If you go by the Christian belief, we are way more than just brothers and sisters. We are brought together by incest. And I don't believe in that. Plus also, too, it was also shown, too, that there was other humans living a thousand miles away from Eden. Yeah. You know, hey, Wild Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Wow. But, you know, and uh, let's see. But, yeah, I mean, I'm just... You're flashing all these things up, and I'm trying to catch them. And, yeah, you know. I was just saying hello to everyone. We've got some hey, people Gary. joining us. Hey, Gary Fields. Gary. Well, there's Terry, lots of Robbie, people who said hello uh, to me, and I never said hello to them. Uh, because you, I was talking about it. So at, this point, so at this point, I will say this. To all the people earlier in the show that said hello to Wild Bill, I did see it, but because of being in midstream <laughs> of something else, I didn't shout out and say hello. So I doubt we give a shout out to everybody that said hello to me earlier. Thank you. Thank you. You know. Bill, Bill, what's your opinion, right? When we're talking about the Bible, right? What's your opinion on Lucifer? On Lucifer? Yep. Well, He goes by many names. So if you want to call Lucifer, I mean, are we going as in Lucifer as being one of the levels? Or are we talking about Lucifer as just being one of the names? Because they're depending on what belief and what religion you're going into. Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub, Fomit, some of them, it's all the same person. But in other beliefs, each one of them is the Lord of a different level. Who who was this? Robbie, who are you talking about uh, was never mentioned in the Bible? Demons, isn't it? Who are you you talking about was never mentioned in the Bible? Come on, Robbie. I'm sure it's definitely demons. I'm waiting. Is he talking about demons? Yeah. He's probably talking about murder films. Well, see to me, see to me, they're fair. not they're not de- they're not demons. That that I don't like that name. It's just like Satan. Satan was actually he was basically as powerful as Christ was. Because that's the reason why he was cast out, because he was becoming too powerful. Because Satan or if you want to yeah. call him Satan, the angel of light, Satan. Okay, yeah, Satan was never Satan. mentioned. If anything, he was mentioned as the angel of light being cast into the pit of darkness. He was never said as his name being Satan. No, but see there again, though. But see there again, I'm in the beliefs. There you go, Robbie. Demons are angels that were cast out. They were angels. They were they were anarchist angels. They were the followers of Lucifer, Satan, whatever you want to call them, the angel of light. They were his followers, so he cast them, God cast them into the pit of darkness. But yeah, I agree with that. That's that's but, I mean, I, I see I feel that same way, Robbie. That's the way I feel. That's the reason why I really don't like using the term demons because yeah the, the terms that i the, the term demon to me is what people call demons would be the okay you've got the angels that were cast okay they're not demons they are what would i would consider to to make it easy on people lesser devils okay uh okay. but uh the so-called demons the little creatures that run around to me that is the minions the minions of them Oh, you know, like, like your little gremlins, around. like your little gremlins and things, you know. Okay, that's that's just the minions of yeah. them. 
but uh, basically, yeah, demons. I don't like using the word demon. I, I hate it even more now after one of my friends uses it constantly but, every place he goes. And I use the term friends. No, sarcastically. No, <laughs> he's not. But, uh, you know. Do you think yeah. Sozel? This one means think... bright or light. He's the, he is the angel of light. That's what he was, right. But uh, also, too, Robbie, real quick, I want to let you know this. Um, I know a good bit about the Catholicism and stuff like you do, too. But uh, this right here, I don't know whether it's going to, you're going to laugh about it or, or avoid me from now on. But uh, I, was, I was excommunicated from the Catholic Church, from the Roman Catholic Church. I was flat told, do not. There you go. Imps, gremlins, things. Yes. See, the minions, the minions of hell. See, me and Robbie yeah. agree on things. We do. That's cool. Yeah. Me and Robbie agree on a lot of this. But and see, and I use it, and I use an open mind for it too. But anyways, I was saying though, yes, I was excommunicated from the Catholic Church for the simple reason of telling them, of telling the archdiocese and stuff that uh that uh, the bishop here in Atlanta, that the Pope was the Antichrist. Oh, wow. And he asked me to prove it, and I did. And then at that point, it's even gotten even worse because now on his robe, he has he has symbols on his robe, which goes into stuff that we won't discuss here on this channel. But oh, gosh. remember what I said yesterday? And you said, oh, that was not good. Yeah, got you. Yeah. Had to do about that. Has to do about that. Ugh. No way. He's got to, the sign that they use. Oh, God, no. It goes all the way down his robe. All the way down it. Ugh. Yes. So, to say the least, I am not a big fan of, I am not a big fan of, of the <laughs> uh, the Roman Catholic belief, the Pope, you know, whatever. Anyway, Bill, do you think man is en route to all evil not all men no but humanity it's already there how can it be going when it's already there i mean man is the only animal that will kill just for the hell of it that's pretty evil to me and also you know man also like how they just because you don't believe like they do they kill you and stuff, and you just, you know, okay, what, I would be, yeah, hey, join me, Robbie, get it, hey, it's fun, it is really fun, especially when you go into a Catholic church for a wedding or something, and, and you're looking around up in the rafters to make sure the dust isn't falling off, that the place is about to collapse on you, it's really fun, and then at the end, when you sit there, and the you're sitting there and you're walking out and you're meeting the priest and he's greeting and everything. And you look at him and say, you know what? Just so you'll know, I'm not even supposed to be in here. And they go, why? And it's like, I was excommunicated. I'm not even, I mean, I don't even know who I am anymore. Oh, they stopped talking to you real quick at that point. But anyway, yeah. Bill, do you huh? think, do you think, Ray, that, these people that they say is the demons and the fallen angels and everything are just basically people that have challenged the Bible and challenged, you know. Oh, believe me, I've challenged, I've challenged the Bible and I ain't seen none of them. <laughs> it's, I mean, what it is is that people have misconception misconception okay hold on real quick let me read okay i'll get back there. let me see what robbie had though real okay quick. yeah then we'll real, get... real quick and i'll get right back <laughs> on yours then terry <laughs> agree 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 all 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 people i'm a firm believer all people are created equal they deserve the same rights if a woman can do a man's job she should get it i have no problem about the gays uh, and all this, uh, it's a simple way with them. Matter of fact, in my business that I had, I had a lot to use to come in. Uh, you can't meet a nicer folk, a nicer people than the gay community. But I just always told them as like, you know, I'm a flaming hetero. Uh, you know, uh, I do my thing, you do your thing. 
you try to do my thing, we're going to have a heart to heart talk. And then I'm going to get my wife. She's going to come kick your ass. <laughs> but anyways, back to your question, though. Um, uh, God, what was it again? <laughs> hey, ba ba basically, what I was saying is, right, we're talking about demons. We're talking about fallen angels. We're talking oh, yes, about yes, yes. people that have been casted out because they 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 know obviously. Um, okay, okay. The deal about the demons and stuff. Now, the now the evil. Yeah, I mean, I believe if you're evil, you're evil, you're evil. You know, that's yeah. Yeah. No matter whether you're alive, dead, or floating to the next dimension, I don't care. You're evil. They born evil. But but demons demons has been publicized so much by the movies, television, and all that, that people automatically just assume that if it's bad or if it's evil, it's a demon. Believe it or not, demons aren't as bad and evil as you think they are. As a matter of fact, some demons, if you want to call them demons, I agree with uh, Rob, what Robbie was saying, imps and the things like that, that they will suck you, all that they will actually do good for you and they will, uh, they will do good for you. They will help you and everything. But at one point though, they're going to want, they're just rewards. And when they ask for it, they want it and they're going to get it. And it might be anything from, I want you to cook me dinner to, I want your soul. You know, it could be anything. Yeah. So, you know, on that note, you know, so, Really on that is I think this demon stuff, I think it's all a product of media and television. Well, that's exactly and, what and, and, to and my Zach, Zach Baggins and uh, you yeah. know. And and they well, say, Well, if you smell sulfur, that's a demon. No, that means somebody just struck a match and now you're smelling sulfur. You know. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I've actually or, or there's something burning underground that's coming up, you know, that smells like sulfur. Uh, I mean there's that, see, that's the reason why I'm a debunker. I'll go in there and find out. Okay, fine. It's sulfur. Yeah, Let's find, find out, out what it's like sulfur. Yeah. Oh, look, right here, you've got raw, you got sulfur smoldering right there, you know, or something. You know, it's just like, yeah, it's like, no, no. Research before you start saying it, you know. Maybe say, well, I suspect there might or could be a demon here because of certain situations. But this is something I'm going to have to look into and then check into it and then come back later on and go, well, we found out what it was. This is what it was. Or we couldn't find nothing and it's still that same way and it doesn't go away. Okay, that means now it could be something else. But this stuff about smelling stuff and this and that, I mean, <laughs> like I said, you know, and the Ouija board, I mean, all this is just. It's just a mass media scare is what it is. Yeah. As far as and those, and now, that's as far as I am concerned, okay? Now, uh, this thing from Gary Fields, I've been trying to kind of look at, but also talk to you. And, and oh, Jack, okay. you, know, you know how my mind goes. I'll read yeah. one word and then my mind somewhere else all of a sudden. Okay. <laughs> I've come across so much white light and positive energies and the lower level of energies and the total difference this they bring along is so far apart the lower energies try and hammer smash the white light and light workers but the white light always shines through in the long term tested to the limit and maximum but trust in your spiritual team that's what gary believes in yeah yeah i can see that gary gary's a brilliant medium um we're speaking to him in a few weeks so I can't I wait. Be, I, I, can, I mean, I can one. I can see that in, in in certain ways, but there again, he can see things in the ways that I can't. Yeah. Plus, uh, I can there again, I can see things with my knowledge and stuff that he can't on a scientific type field, you know. And yeah, uh, that's that. That's so. You know, so it just you know because when you say white light, I mean there again, we can go back to Lucifer. Who was the guy? Who was the guy, uh, angel of light? And see, and this is another thing too. People have okay. You are right. I mean, <laughs> it, it, well, actually, Robbie, what it is? Sulfur comes from eating too many baked beans and whiskey, and then trying to cover it up, you light a 
book of matches to try to cover the smell. <laughs> that's where the sulfur comes from. It's from the burning matches, you know. But still, it's the product of the beans and whiskey. I agree, I agree. Yeah. But uh, as I was going to say, no, but uh, the thing that gets me, though, is that Satanism gets a bad name. Yep, I couldn't make it anymore. But because isn't what isn't what we do could some class it as Satanism because oh, we're, we're trying witches. to put spirit. We're witches, we're you know? evil, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. So people will call us whatever, is, wouldn't they? See, that's another thing too, though. During this time that I went back and started studying theology again and everything, trying to get my act together to become an ordained minister. I've actually studied and practiced Satanism. But I practiced in Satanism on a level following a certain person and not another. Because in a general, Satanism is a belief, a religion, in order to better yourself. Because usually when people talk about making deals with the devil and stuff like that, what is it to better yourself? He's helping you to better yourself. All he's doing is he's speeding it up. And in order, like I said, the imp, all the demons and stuff, they're going to do that. But when they come back, wanting their, wanting their just reward or their payback, whatever, then they're going to want it. And just so happens all of them with Satan, you know, always say, yeah, Satan gives it to you. He's going to want your soul. That has not been proven that every time a deal is done, that it's the soul is involved. Because I know for a fact that there's been other things that like, I will do this for you if you will do this for me. And it has nothing to do with my soul. Right. And But see, the thing is, is like, for instance, let's just give, do we know who the name Anton LaVey is? Yep, he as he was the, <coughs> one of the founders and a big Satanist man. Anton LaVey was a founder of his own branch of Satanism, which all it is has nothing to do. They do not practice black arts. I've been there, been to the church. All it is is a it's a church of egotistical enablers just to try to better themselves than anybody else and just using the like the I like they always say it's not what you know it's who you know and they use that power to me Anton LaVey is not Satanism it is sat it is satanic religion due to the idea of bettering yourself which just about all satanic religions do that they all have that in fact the one i followed was from a gentleman named y'all might have heard of him i don't know maybe but his name was alistair crowley i absolutely know there you go. Crowley. <laughs> i followed, uh, I I followed really. him there you go, Terry. Yes, I am going there we down. Go. So, so we're getting into sex magic now. <laughs> but see, I've got, I've got, see, I've got some of Ballister's grimoires. Wow, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But you know, but it's just really you know, Satanism. I agree, Willow. Satanism is not a bad religion. It's just how you practice. I mean. I mean, hell, if you want to look at it, Christianity was a bad religion. Look what happened back during the time of, let's go to the Spanish Inquisition. The Christians have punished and tormented and tortured more as more people and not as many, I mean, maybe more so than other religions, you know, but yet they never bring that part up. The same battle has no reason. Oh, sorry. Right. Slipped. <laughs> right. It, it, I mean, I, I, I mean, even in the grimoires I have, it does not promote evil. It doesn't. Now, some of the stuff, like some of his uh, incantations and incantations and things like that might be considered evil, but evil by their standards, not others. 
It's not to do harm toward people. Now, if you want to do that, let's talk about the witchcraft then and covens, because some of them will actually do spells and stuff to hurt other people. And then you really karma comes have, in. Just you really that. don't have that in Satanism. It's, I mean, it's just not there. It's just not there. I mean, there's, believe it or not, in Satanism, there's just as much love in it as there is in Christianity, if not more, and probably more, because all your Christian beliefs battle against each other. And I would hate to say it. I don't know about where y'all live, but where I live over here, I would say 75% or better are hypocrites. <laughs> They're only Christians in brotherly love, only on Sunday in church. Any other yeah. time they're not, you know. So, you know, the only thing I, oh, look, Tom Gully's on. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Tom, you are right. You are right. Like you and I both, we really believe. What is our favorite? What was our favorite scene out of any movie? And it's how Old Yeller died. Yep, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep, the ending scene for Old Yeller. Mm -hmm. That's got to be great. Tom, I am so glad to see you on. I have not seen this man, folks. I tell you what, Tom Gully, this has got to be one of my best friends. Oh, Even though we haven't met. He's got to be, we've talked a lot and everything, but he's got to be one of my best friends. Uh, some of our beliefs don't co coincide with each other, but we don't discuss that and we don't fuss about it. But this gentleman here, he is brilliant. He, he really is. He, he's, 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 uh, he's, I'm not going to say a jack of all trades and a master. No, he's a jack of all trades and a master of quite a few. Oh, wow. Quite a few. And this That's man... Funny. This man is just, I tell you, I mean, I got him during the COVID stuff. I got some of the UK people following his show. He was so good on the COVID day. He would actually give a special, he does podcasts and stuff. Uh, well, oh, cool. live streams and all that kind of stuff of general information. And very, very knowledgeable man, very smart. Uh, I would say definitely IQ probably over mine which don't take much to get over 15. Oh, so, you know, what can you say? But uh, he uh, he was so kind that he actually would get up on Saturday morning and give a special show just for the people that was on lockdown in the UK for COVID. Oh, wow. I did well, watch the shows. But he used to, I mean, you know, he was always on Monday through Friday, religiously, Monday through Friday. During the years that I knew him, maybe once or twice he didn't show up. But he had a reason. There was a reason why he didn't come on. And then a couple of times he even came on late because he didn't come on. So he came on later. But this man, he's going to start his shows back up again. And I can't wait for him to do it. Because yeah. I, I, I I put it like this. I'm jagging for some Tom Gully show. I am. <laughs> I miss it so bad. And all the people we dealt with and call in because you can call into his show and all that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, Tom is great. So, Tom, kudos. Thank you for showing up, brother. I really appreciate it. I hope everything's going well for you. But now on that note, we're going back to the show. Oh, bless you. I did, I did watch Tom Gully's show because you, you used to share them. So yeah. I used to watch them. Yeah, they're cool. Definitely. So we've got a question here from Vaughn. Uh, what's your <laughs> thoughts on heaven and hell? There you go. <laughs> uh, okay, let's put it like this. <laughs> uh, and, 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 oh, the only word, yes, if I ever want, okay, I got to do this for Tom real quick, and then I'll get back on that one. He says, the world's only known cure for insomnia. Yes, if I'm ever up at night and I'm wanting to go to sleep, I just can't do it, and, 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 and meds ain't helping. All I do is I just turn on Tom Gold's show. Next thing you know, sound asleep. Oh. Now, that's a lie. That's a lie. But I had to do that for him, you know. And, Tom, <laughs> remember this, our favorite set, our favorite phrase, you just can't fix stupid. And we had a lot of it on there, too, sometimes, you know. Oh, wow. Got to love those trolls. Got to love them. 
But anyway, my belief on heaven and hell. Okay, here it is. Okay, well, um, we're, we're, you're about to hit that. Um, to me, heaven and hell. We are living in hell right now. This is hell. Heaven, when person talks about heaven, they're again really about the only person that really says heaven is your Christians. When you ask them, where is heaven? Where do they always show you? They point up to the stars. <laughs> Let's get back to what I said before. Where does my God live? Not sure which planet it is, whether it's Alpha Centauri or which one, but that's where they live. So, do I believe in heaven and hell? Hell is where we live at this point. Heaven is where we go after this one is done. And because you got to remember one thing that what we have right here is just a physical body. It's nothing but a vessel to carry our energy. And on that one, energy never dies. So, when you when you pass away, that last gasp that they talk about, whatever, the spirit, yeah. what that is, that is the final residual energy leaving that vessel. Yes, Robbie, you're right. I think I kind of said that also, maybe. Because I just now, when I said that the energy leaves the body and that energy becomes, goes into the vastness, and that, I think, is what people consider heaven, you know. Well, you know, Willa, we could talk Matrix, you know. <laughs> we could talk to Matrix, which on that one, I mean, I, I, I can see that happening. I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't, uh, what am I trying to say, experienced it. But there's a lot of it there because, I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, you go back and watch The Simpsons and stuff. A lot of stuff that they did has proven to be true now the, to this day. That's, yeah, that's amazing. And that. Matrix could be. But myself, personally, I have not experienced it because right now when I burn myself, I hurt. So as far as I know, I am physical body is real right now. Now, is it Matrix and my body somewhere else and this is just a whatever? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll put it like this, Terry. On that one, I'm going to take a side seat on because I, I just really haven't, I, truthfully, I just really haven't gotten into that. I just really haven't studied it. So I, I, for to me to speak on it would be for me to speak out of turn and maybe be giving out some information which is completely wrong. And before I do that, I'd just rather say I'm ignorant on that uh, on that particular subject. Okay. What do you think of past lives then? Past lives? I have not. See, but Robbie apparently believes in it. Uh, I do as well. I, I have never had anybody to tell me, show me or anything uh of me having a past life so as far as remembering recollections and stuff I, I i would have to say i haven't had no proof of it right. i'm not gonna say no i'm not gonna say it's not there but i've had no proof of it so and there again me being a skeptic believer in the paranormal field like i am like i said i've got to have something to come up and slap me in the face for me to believe it or i have got to see it or hear it which there again that's me doing videos and audios, you know, yeah. it's just, uh, I, I'm not, I mean, you know, I'm not an empath. I'm not, a, I'm not a mentalist or nothing like that. Uh, you know, Robbie, I would love for you to just to see, but and see that could prove me then that could prove to me. And once I get proven about something, then I can believe it. But until then, I'm not going to voice my opinion on it because 
I don't know enough about it. But as far as I would say right now, do I believe in a past life? No. I've done but one yet, with did, but, but yet, but yet, where did my energy was my energy created when I was born? That's where I don't did know. it come from? Yeah. See, it, either my energy was created when I was born, or it was in a past life, and I just don't know it. Yeah. I mean, I could maybe see myself, and maybe if my past life, being how much I know about barbering and this and that, I was probably Sweeney Todd. Oh, I love that movie. Because that that just fits right up my ballpark would be Sweeney Todd, you know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, past, present, and future is now and can be taped into it in a second. Dimensional. Okay. Okay, Terry. Uh, I mean, see, Terry, you're bringing up stuff now. You're going to make me work for it, aren't you? <laughs> you're bringing up stuff now that's bringing up my curiousness to... Uh, well, let me find out what Terry's talking about. Let me see if she's right or wrong. Let's go see. And see, that's what I like. See, that's what I do. I try to talk to people, not saying this is what I believe and I think you should believe. I'll tell you, this is what I believe. But what I want you to do, I want you to be curious enough not to believe me, but to see if I'm right or wrong. And search, research, because the best way to learn is to research, to read it, to do it yourself. Don't listen to other people. Do it yourself. You receive more that way. And like I tell, and I've said this many a time, that, uh, that well, the Big Bang Theory, that was energy right there in its own self. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, like I was saying, it's just like, I just want people to to go out to learn. And if I have said something that uh, you find is wrong, don't sit there and go, wow, Bill was wrong about that. Come back and tell me about it, please. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to say you're crazy as hell and you're lying. I'm going to sit there and listen to what you say. And if you can show now, just come in and tell me about it. Mm, I'm still going to believe what I believe. But you come back and you show me proof. You can show me tangible proof, whether it be. I mean, I don't care how it is, whether it's in writing, this, that, whatever. But you can show me proof, undeniable proof. You know what? You have just changed my mind. You have now got me thinking this way now. And now you have just opened up a whole new avenue to me because believing it in this way could have a chain reaction, which causes me to, to, to maybe think about this one, that it could be different. This one, because it could be different simply because this one changed, you know? So it's just, you know, I'm I'm just out here to like she said I like 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 Willow said I I, I really opened up our, that we have that we have opened up our eyes tonight. That's all I want to do. Yeah, that's you just question everything, and that's great. That's right. brilliant. Because you never learn until you question. And also, people too, there is no, there is never a stupid question. Now, there again, let's use common right. sense. If common sense flats tells you no. Then okay, we got a stupid question, but that's only because it explains itself. But as far as a question, I taught my sons, my granddaughter, I mean, there is no stupid question, and there's only stupid answers. And, they and if you answer. ask, and if you ask me a question, believe me, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, and I'm going to be blunt. But the thing is, though, when I finish, you will know. There will be no question. So, you know. There you go. Question everything and use your own logic to find the answer. Right, right, it's, right. It's the best right. way, really, isn't it? I mean, that's the way I've always felt. That's the way I've always yeah. been and I've always felt. My grandmother taught me that. And my grandmother always taught me to question everything. Yeah. Question everything. 
I do naturally. Well, well, she taught me to question everything but her. Never question her. What she says goes. Ooh, so you she was pretty you. well right on that one. If not, she showed me what the end of a broomstick felt like. To be open to receive, you have to ask. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, 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 well, yeah. Actually, to me, to be open, you have to be inquisitive, question, do not discriminate, and just accept all and then figure, I mean, accept all information coming in and then go from there. Now, there again, <clears throat> there again, depending on the subject, what's right for me might not be right for y'all. Yeah. But that's because of my beliefs. That's it. We all have our own. And, and then, like I tell you, it's all about accepting it as well, isn't it? That everyone's got their own beliefs. Right, right. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. That's the reason why I say if you prove to me I'm wrong, I'm not, or your belief, or we can talk about beliefs. I'm not going to get mad. <clears throat> I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to down you. Uh, cause I show, cause like I say, my two, my two good words I always love in this field is respect oh. and truth. You know? Oh no. That <laughs> must be a nightmare. Yeah. I used to have to go to Sunday school and church every week. So I guess that's why I took a different direction. Well, see, I've actually went through Catholicism and then later on went oh, through Christian gosh. beliefs like uh, Presbyterian Methodist, all that. Wow. Matter of fact, like the Presbyterian Church, they still attach to the Catholic Church. People don't want to really, no, 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 Presbyterian, Presbyterian they're Protestants. Like, no. See what their see what their uh, uh, response is. Like their the the responses are at the beginning and the ending of the of the service. It's Catholic, you know. Bye, Terry. Bye, Terry. It was great to see you on here. Long time no see. Glad you can make it. Yeah. So, but, was... uh, but now my grandmother, she uh, she believed in Jesus and God only simply because it was kind of more or less forced on her. Thank yeah. you. For thank you, uh, Europeans, for coming over here and uh, destroying our culture. Uh, oh, but uh, <laughs> the missionaries, you know, because yeah. before them, before them, we were doing just fine. Then they come over and they really screwed up everything, you know. Oh, I gosh. mean, simply okay. How how wrong is this? Just because I was born on an Indian reservation, I have to be Catholic. Why? That's yeah. crazy. But I suppose that some people have that mentality because I can remember years ago when I was in Spain and because I was supporting an English team, people were saying to me, I but you're Scottish. It's that kind of ideology, the ignorance. Mm -hmm. I, I, I heard what you were saying. Now I was also reading what Robbie was saying too. Yeah. Robbie, oh, real no, quick, on, on yours, Robbie, real quick, I just want to say, See if the Pope feels that way. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Anyway, we've got to come to the end of the show, but mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thanks, and thanks, thanks so much for everyone who's commented, everyone really who's joined in the chat. And it's been intriguing, and we never know which way it's going to be under with these chats. And uh, been interesting. Yeah. I tried to be nice today. You were very nice. Yes. I was I was not my normal self. I tried to be nice. <laughs> you know, so uh, out of respect for you ladies, I, I I was nice. So you know. Oh, you were good. <laughs> but I do thank everybody that came on and watched this travesty called Bob <laughs> Bill. But I hope I hope I did kind of open your mind and open your eyes and your ears a little bit so that you will start questioning stuff. Yeah, that's and true. if you ever got any questions from me, I mean, I don't have no quote unquote paranormal page, none of that kind of stuff, because I've just got my own personal page. Got a lot of that stuff on there because I deal with horror and all sorts of stuff. 
as you can tell around me. But yeah. uh, if you ever have any questions, feel free to come message me and I'll talk. And if you um, have a problem, I'll talk. You know, uh, like I said, I've got a degree in psychology. I can sit down and be a counselor just as good as anybody else can. Uh, you know, but uh, on some stuff, I might even tell you I'd leave that alone. Maybe you should go talk to somebody else, you know. <laughs> but uh, feel free to contact me. It's all good. It's all good. Oh, bless you. Um, so it just comes to the end of a show, obviously. But you have a show on. When's that? It's on the Things Network? It will be Thursday. Well, in the UK, it will be Thursday evening. In the US, it'll be Thursday afternoon because it is at five o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which it's would be 10, 10 o'clock for y'all until 10, you go yeah. on that daylight savings program stuff. Yeah, but and you change will, as well, don't and you? And it will go, it will go until 7 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until Robbie uh, until uh, uh until Things Network gets somebody else to fill either from five <laughs> to six or six to seven or oh, whatever. Sure. But I'm just going to fill for it sure. in for right now just to uh, yeah. help out Things Network. So that's going to be two and a half hours of just ranting and raving. So you can drop that's in that. and out. Do, you think you can, you, do you really think you can talk two and a half hours? Nah, not me. <laughs> ask, me hey, ask, ben, ask Ben and Damon because they've already said like the day, uh, Damon and Ben were talking one day and they go, you know, we could have one of our other dimension show on. Bring it on. us, Me and you. And then say, we've got a guest, Wild Bill, bring him on. And then we could go do whatever we wanted to because Bill would cover the show, the rest of the thing. It's like, well, you know, if you leave it with me, I can do it, you know. But uh, yeah, bless you. Whatever. <laughs> uh, thanks anyway. We're going now. Take care. Look after yourself. Thanks and, very um, much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you.